now. Coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. Mastering is important and evolving. Our guest will discuss. Less than 30 days to Pensado Awards 3. A great night is coming up. Details also coming up. More winners on the Blackbird Foundation series. An ITL from the Master Blaster right here. And we are speaking up at Google next week. Oh, How about so that? Let's get it. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yay! <laughs> hey guys, thanks for dropping by. You caught me playing accordion. Right. Herb, you know how close I was to being an accordion player? I, I apparently you're still working Man, on it. I almost, a, a handsome accordion player blew through my neighborhood and uh -huh. all the women, oh, well, that's, I, I know that's this sounds racist, enough. but no, back not, then men were not racist at all. I would like to, like to get My mom bought an accordion, my dad came home and get that out of my house. That's so, how close I came. All right. Hey guys, a lot going on. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we've got some special guests we'll talk to you about. Um, man, I can't wait, Herb. It's like, it's like, it's coming, huh? It's coming, yeah. I know. I'm a little tense about. It. Shall we tell them about sure, it? Sure. <clears throat> Let's move forward. Hey, audio family, we trust your week was good. We thank you as always for your likes, subscribes, and support. Just like we thank the good folks at the Blackbird Academy, Vintage King, Lander, yep. DTS, Fab Factory, Avid, and the Recording Connection. Yes, what Dave was referring to is the big dance is less than 30 days away. Pensado Awards 3 coming up very fast on August 20th. That night we celebrate the guitar and we're also going to attempt to do something great for charity. All on the Sony movie lot, Under the Stars. What's going on? This is what's going on. There'll be three amazing performances. Rock guitar god Phil X will yeah. absolutely shred. Phil plays with Bon Jovi and a whole bunch of other things. Guitar folks love him. Michael Fish Herring will bless us with his awesome acoustic chops. You're gonna love that. And then acclaimed bass player, just a funk master, Ethan Farmer. Ethan. is coming in from Germany. He's gonna wow. funk us all out. It's gonna be incredible. Um, as we look at our VIP signups, we have the largest number of VIPs we've had in three years. They registered. That means all your heroes will be there. They wanna hang out with you and you should hang out with them and come on. On the charity front, we're going to raise money for David Plataleros. Um, you heard us tell the story. He's a Nashville audio warrior, hit by a texting driver, suffered severe spinal damage, is paralyzed, and is facing a huge fight. <clears throat> Excuse me. This guy is really one amazing spirit. Cool, we talked to him pretty much. Yeah. So Dave and I are taking up the fight. Um, we're going to use a social media app called Mobile Cause. We're going to raise money for him. You'll be able to text a donation along with your name. Your contribution will show up on the mobile cause dashboard, if you like or not, doesn't matter. And the money will go directly to David. His dad is going to attend on his behalf. And what we want to do is be able to say the audio community has stepped up and here you go and let's help him yeah. through the thing. This is a great guy. We talked to him on the yeah. phone, right? Yeah, I mean, a great guy, a great community. I think it bring those two entities together is going to produce some amazing results. This yeah. kid, this kid is a fighter. Mm -hmm. Any term you want to use is not enough. The superlatives have run out on this guy. He deserves our help. He's, he, he, he's inspirational. Yeah, he inspirational. really is. Inspirational. Like five minutes on the phone with him and I worked an extra two hours yeah. that day. I'm not being, I'm not being no, I saw flippant. It, it was, yeah. it's, it's inspirational he's to see people have a hardship and overcome that. Amazing, amazing. Good kid, amazing. good kid. And the father <coughs> and the parents too. And, and by the way, you too, Herb, you, oh. you orchestrated this. It was your idea and you deserve the, all the credit for doing something great. The it, idea that we can do this is just amazing. That, you yeah. know, why it's wouldn't heart. we do that? That's well, a good thing. Oh, don't Get start down. me. <laughs> don't start me up. Um, can't let my man down. You guys, we have to come through for this kid and so, for her. So what we'll do is the night of the award, we'll monitor those results. We'll keep updating everybody on the screens as the money goes up. Um, folks who are attending that we have talked to are already challenging their fellow audio pros to help out. That's amazing for us to watch. Um, I will tell each and every one of you watching as you're part of a very special community. Mm -hmm. Believe that. You folks yeah. are really awesome. So... At what Dave alluded to, and what we're going to do is we're going to change a life, certainly help a life. So we'll get it all set up. We'll announce it next week, the details, and show you how it works. Make sure we have it down. It's going to be a great thing. Then, also next week, we announce the nomination. It's going to be really cool. It's good records. I was, I'm well, not a drunk. What was the Sham Wow guy on TV? Fish? Is that his name? I don't remember his name, but he was. Uh, yeah. Well, no, the and. 
oh. not just these 20 pans, you get this frying pan. <laughs> <laughs> so is that how the nominations are working? <laughs> no, I just, I don't know. Uh, you were just I was homeless earlier this, this week. week. I'm kind of spacing. Yeah, and listen, what Dave's referring to, if you guys have watched the news at all, there was a huge fire that's been out here forever. Uh, the flames came up to our man's house pretty close. He got out. He had to spend the night in the studio at Fab Factory. We were all really nervous, but Dave handled it well. He's here, and you can move back in yesterday, right? Yeah, late last night I got cool. back in. So it, it, That's know, a little scary. It's a pretty scary moment. You know, um, I forget who did it, but one... Uh, I wish I could remember who did it. Leandro will tell me. You know the question I always ask if your studio caught fire, what one thing you... <laughs> you do that in battery I box. did it. And what did, you, and what did you take? Oh, I took I took two albums of my daughter's baby pictures. Uh -huh. I took my laptop. Uh -huh. I took my Strat. I took clothes for the show in case right. it didn't. And their pets. Well, I hate to say it, but I had to take my tax records too. Wow, well, that's, that's a whole other story. I, I, I took, I took uh, my wife's cat and my dog. And uh, by the way, they, they helped make a great record. So, yeah. and they missed this record for yeah. your help. So, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. there were some advantages. And by the way, uh, I didn't go through anything. There's, there's some people that struggled for that. And, and if you live in the area, there's some people that, that need some help with that too. But he I'm, I'm okay. He almost burned up. That's the reality. So, anyways, back to that. Next week, we announced the nominations. Can't wait to see what that is. Can't wait to give it to you. It's going to be really special. Then at the wheel, that night are your host, Chris Lord Algy, also the winner of our Pensado Giant Award, Derek Mixed by Ali, Kendrick Lamar's guy, Taryn Manning, the star of Orange is the New Black, one of the stars, Taren. but also Eight Mile and mm -hmm. Hustle and Flow and a bunch of other good stuff. Sam Maloney, she's an incredible rock drummer, but also a vice president of A.R. at Warner Brothers. And Gavin Lurson, literally one of the masters of mastering. And uh, the most handsome man in audio. We got, yeah, we're going to have a lot of pretty people because that's just, because you, <laughs> you guys in audio are just gorgeous. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <ma> <laughs> Look at this present face. Present company excluded. Yeah. Many of your favorites are going to be presenters. Um, it wouldn't be Pensado without some surprises. So you know me and you know Dave, that's going to happen. The net effect is it's time for you to celebrate to enjoy where you are, to let down your hair and party. So the only thing we need is you. It always heats up right about now, and it's been pretty intense already. So Dave and I suggest you go ASAP to PensadoAwards.com. You'll see instructions on where to sign up, hotels if you're traveling, addresses and times of all the events, and you can sign up directly there at Eventbrite. It's only 50 bucks, probably the lowest ticket on an award show of this size in the industry. Um, we appreciate it. And st some really good seating is still available, but it's going fast, so you should move ASAP. Mm -hmm. yeah. What else do you need to do? Put on your rock and roll finery, whatever you think it is. Ladies, you're a very important part of our community. Please join us. You are so important to us. Um, you will arrive to your reception. We'll call you to the park. I think we have this sound that we use that will call you to the park. Can we hear that sound? Just, yeah. Oh, wow. There is a sound. Ooh. I need, to start, I need to start attending rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> so when you hear that sound ringing out over the Sony movie lot, it's not Game of Thrones. It's actually time for the show to start. Um, that's going to be all good. And uh, so once we do the big show under the stars, then you'll move into the Into the Lair Lounge afterwards. You'll get a drink, get loose, and you'll get to meet the presenters and the VIPs and the hosts and the winners, and we'll hang with you and, uh, and some of the surprises that we're gonna have there. So get there. <clears throat> it is filling please, up fast. Please, it's it's pretty please. fast, but it's gonna be a big deal. Now, let's meet the host from Hungary, who is almost always hungry. He goes by the name of... John Gold. <laughs> I can't do it seriously with this many people. Are you, I know, right. <laughs> right good, uh, I want my own flag. John Gord, he's sporting that Hungarian flag, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, he puts it up even when How there's no context. How do we know it's the Hungarian flag? We don't know. We don't know. He may have made that. What's the difference between the Hungarian flag and the Mexican flag? That's the Hungarian. Oh, uh, I think it's the, the way it's angled. You're, you're under pressure. Straight I, up. I think you flubbed that. Might have. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, We'll Mr. have that answer next week. Yeah, we will. Um, so, Mr. Are you hungry? Not right now. Oh, that's rare. I know. That's rare. My <laughs> net worth has dropped. Didn't Hungary just do pretty well in the... Uh, oh, that was Iceland. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry in Iceland. They're right next door to each other, as you all know. Right. Oh, man. I, I don't know. I was trying to... You survived I, I, a fire. You get to do whatever well, you want. Well, I was trying to sound okay. erudite with, with my soccer knowledge. I, I, right. I know nothing That's about right. soccer. Chelsea, the, I respect it, though. the Blackbird Foundational Series. So we talk about it every week. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple more weeks left in the contest. Yep. 
again, for we have a bunch of students here from Ohio University and um, probably school. about 20 of them. Clap. <laughs> there you hear the sound. They're, they're, they're attractive people. I wish you could see them. We might turn the camera on. Where did D'Angelo Russell play? What's that? Where did D'Angelo Russell play? Not there. Oh, good. That's okay. Cool. <laughs> this, uh, this, this group, I was scared for a minute. No, no, no. And they have a lot of winners because a, a bunch of them from Cleveland, so they recently won the award. So there's a, there's a lot of good like Midwestern Ohio. values here. Like um, so is the Blackbird Foundation Series something that people in college, people at the beginning exactly. should get? Is that exactly. The, key? It, the, the Blackbird Foundation Series gives you the foundation you need for audio. If you can't go to audio school, but you still want to learn about signal flow, how a speaker works, how microphones work, the Black Financial Series is all you need. You got everything you need there. Well, very good, very good. Very good um, so in the sweepstakes, we got a couple things going on. One is you get the Foundational Series if you're a weekly winner. You get drum sample packages for SSD and Trigger, correct? Um, you get, uh, what else do you get? Is there something else? Access to Groove 3. Access to your own subscription to Groove 3 and Groove 3. and Groove 3 is a great site and you get a um, gift card. Exactly. And you also get entered into the grand prize which you will get a flyaway to Nashville. You'll be a special guest at Gear Expo Nashville, our event in October. Yep. You'll get a personal tour of one of the best studios in the business, the Blackbird Studios as well as the Blackbird Academy. Correct? Correct. And you get to be on Pensado's Place. We we'll oh. do a Skype version of Pensado's Place. That's the grand place. Oh, it's grand. I thought it was like fourth place or something. No, well, that. <laughs> I see how you think about our show. <laughs> I'm on it. It can't That's be good. That's the runner. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a WC Fields. I, I wouldn't want to be a member of a country club that would have yeah. me as a member. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, here you are. So what does that say about my taste? So you got a couple winners for this week? We do. This week's winners are Paul Rayfield and Amy Schmeidlin. Well, let's give them a big right. round of applause. Come on, gang. Paul Rayfield and Amy. Paul and Amy. All right, we got a couple more weeks of that, and then off we go um, and, and uh, make sure you winners get your prizes and fulfillment. The other thing that's going on with Blackbird, Dave, the professor, is going down to do what's called Blackbird Sessions. That's mm -hmm. what, October 24th through the 28th? Is that when the dates are? Yep. Um, give your synopsis on what that week is like. Well, first of all, it, it, it's, it's about friendship building. Um, I learn more than anybody when I teach these students. Uh, they're not really students. They're, they're people that are, are pretty good. And, mm -hmm. and it's just a wonderful experience. We, we tend to stay in touch with each other after we, uh, after we leave. And basically, you watch me um, do what I do every day, make a record, you know? Mm -hmm. And I give you some philosophy. And don't let that scare you. I know I, I, know I get long-winded. But uh, I, it's something in, in the whole skeleton and outline of the course is what I wish I'd have had when I was where you were starting out. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I try to save you at, at least five years to your pathway in the arc that you want for the rest of your uh, recording career. And I ain't gonna lie her, well maybe I do sometimes, but not now. Um, no. Blackbird, <laughs> Blackbird is like, to me, uh, and, and this is just my opinion, but whenever I'm there, I just feel more creative mm -hmm. and hanging out with creative people. Like you'd go down the hall and, mm -hmm. and see some of my buddies I haven't seen in, in a while. And it's just a great creative environment. And you get to use multiple types of, of consoles. Multiple, you see a lot of stuff that you might not get exposed to. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking to the Ohio students earlier. And uh, sometimes it's good just to know what your options are in life. Um, mm -hmm. I was a little bit single focused myself and, and that produced some great results but also some less than uh, great results and so I try to save you a lot of time and, and sh give you access to some of the things that have, have uh, gone into all the big successful records I've so made. The, the, the mechanics are five straight days, eight hours a day. Uh, what happens Ish. with Dave, yeah, what happens with Dave is you get this value add so it's going to be lunch with him dinner with him. I've gone and spoken to the class each year. Yeah, they and love generally you. Dave, well, forget about that. They generally are with Dave from about nine in the morning till nine at night. Yeah. And they just walk away with a lot of information. Dave is a phenomenal teacher. And we we do we keep it as a community yeah. and we keep talking. Not so really a good teacher, but I got some experience I can share with you. Yeah, now. I'll make that decision. So okay. uh, uh, so you want to get to karma at the blackbirdacademy.com, look at that email, look at that site, sign up, get to the Blackbird session, particularly featuring the professor here, Dave Pensado. You will enjoy, I've talked to a lot of students who've done it, 
who've come up with the money to do it. I've not had one unsatisfied customer yet. It's a, it's a really special thing. If you come a couple days early, you also will catch Gear Expo Nashville, which is a great event that we have down there. So you can kind of make it a two for right? Yeah. You know, yeah. the rule of thumb, if it has the two words Blackbird in it, it's going to be spectacular. Pretty much. Pretty John, much. John McBride does not play around. No. I, he just called me today about some stuff. But cool. That's a whole other story. Um, so make sure you get there October 24th through October 28th. Nashville, Tennessee, Music City at one of the most, probably, I think, one of the top three studios Can in the world. Can I throw one in there? Sure. Um, we're in Nashville, but um, um, don't think that we're coming to do country records. Don't think that we're coming to do rock records. Uh, you, you guys know the records I make, and that's what we're going to talk about. And it's, we're not so much uh, genre specific right. as we are creative and how to get your creativity and how to work with the things that are, that are going to make you successful in any genre because there's a group of things that are similar for genres. Absolutely. And speaking of that, another teaching tool is your ITL. You've been in the Groove 3 crates. What do you have for us? Yeah, well, to, I think this is a special one. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a long introduction. Uh, I, I teach my assistants to absorb everything. I want my assistants to know how to use every console ever made, every DAW ever mm -hmm. made, every mm -hmm. plugin ever made, every guitar amp ever made, every mic pre ever made, because a lot of times an opportunity will come just by you being the only person in the, no, in the room that knows how to use these things. Absolutely. And so recently, as you've heard me say a few times, uh, I'm trying to master Ableton Live. Mm. And um, am I going to use it as my main DAW? Probably not. But it does some things that nothing else does. And as an adjunct to, to whatever DAW you're using, it's incredible. Mm. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm benefiting from that in a major way. It's, it's, it's important to distinguish yourself from all the other people on the radio, and this gives me a big, big advantage. So I want to show you an introduction to that. Please watch it. I think it's important. Roll it. All right, welcome back. First, let's go over some workflow enhancements, and then we'll wrap up this video with uh, some latency improvements. So first off, let's go back to preferences. Shortcut on a Mac is command comma, or we can go to live preferences. And under record, warp, and launch tab, we have a start playback with tap tempo option. We can turn that on and off. So by default, if I start tapping a tempo, after I click it four times, playback begins. We can turn that off now if we want to. All right, next up, we have a really cool way to work with clips. I'm going to double click on this one, hit play, and here's an audio clip of a drummer, right? So previously, if I wanted to use just the first bar, I could select the time, right click, and select loop selection. The loop brace moves up here to the top, and now we have a one bar clip. Okay, I could do the same thing with, say, beat four. Loop it. And there is my fourth beat in the first measure that's being looped. All right, very easy. Now, let's say I want to do something out of the ordinary. I want to loop from here to here. So that's not a bar. That's not a beat. That's not even, you know, something that I, maybe I don't even know what it is. Now I can right click and I can warp the selection as a one beat loop. So if I were to loop this, it would sound something like this. All right, if I were to right click and warp it as a one beat loop, it sounds like this. Let's try something else. Let's do something even smaller. So maybe I just want this little hit here. If I loop it, it sounds like this. If I right click and warp it as a one beat loop. So we're basically taking a time selection and we're forcing it into a common length, whether it be a beat or a bar. Next up, there are some updates when it comes to working with audio and specifically warping. We have better tempo detection when we are importing a clip and when we are warping using these commands here. There's also better downbeat detection, finding the beginning of a clip, even when there's not a strong transient. And finally, the warp modes of Complex and Complex Pro now sound better. All right, next up, let's take a look at latency. 
Now, latency compensation was added in a while ago for Ableton Live, but there were some weird things that could happen. But now with 9.2, Macs for Live devices, as well as third-party devices, have lower latency. We can even hover over the title bar for these devices and see how much latency is added with these devices. We can look down here in the status bar and see exactly how much time is being compensated whenever we add a device. Let's head over to Arrangement View and talk about modulation and automation latency compensation. It's been one of the biggest requests as far as an update with Live. If I draw automation, I'll do something simple like volume, something like this. This automation would not be compensated according to the latency that has been added to that track. So it would look something like this visually, but this little automation duck here would probably come in too early because the audio has latency. Now it's been fully fixed. If you draw it on the transient, you're going to hear it on the transient. Great improvement. Thank you, Ableton. So that's it as far as the 9.2 updates that now ship. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Our girl Candace Stewart, um, the doyen of East West uh, Recording Studios, another amazing studio in LA, uh, is a big fan of this guy. And we've become a big fan of this guy. He knows his stuff. We had a conversation with him recently. Please enjoy our discussion at this desk with Brian Lucy. Lucinda Williams, The Kills. The Last Shadow Puppets, our guest is making his mark in the mastering world. From Magic Garden Mastering, we welcome to the place the one and only Brian Lucy. What's happening, man? Thanks, man. Thanks, it happened. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm glad to have you. Glad to have Brian, you. Brian, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Oh, man, you know, not much changes in our world every day. But a lot changing in yours. Uh, what we've noticed over the last couple of years is that mm. there's this evolution in mastering going on, both... Mm the technology of, of what you do and how you do and the stuff you receive, the configurations that you have to get ready for now, hmm. there's algorithms and there's online, map. there's a lot going on, right? The, the oh, start, we'll go down that path. Well, uh, you bring up a good, a good point. I, I didn't think about this, but a lot of people don't realize, of course, Brian knows this very well, better than me, uh, that mastering has had different responsibilities over time, depending on the format that the consumer ultimately right. listens to music on. So, Mastering really had its heyday, or one of its heydays, because they had to get it from uh, from us to vinyl. Right. And so the the process of going to vinyl was was very very intricate and difficult. Mm -hmm. And then prior to that, I, I don't know what it was, but I'm sure it was something specific. And then nowadays, you've got a, a whole level of complexities because you've got so many mediums with which to media with media. which to um, to get talk, ready talk about for some of everything changes. from SoundCloud. Well, I mean, uh, I'm not uh, maybe the best historian, but from what I know in talking to, say, Bernie Grumman, there was the time when the EQ got involved, right. which was like uh, 56 to sure. 60, yeah. somewhere right. around there. And then, you know, vinyl mastering, lacquer cutting, you know, something that I don't do. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that was an era. Yep. That yeah. was the era where there were a few people's names that we would see. Yes. And then we've entered into this digital era starting in well, the 90s, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm a bit blessed in that you know as much as things are changing around me, my day is kind of the same every day. Mm -hmm. I, I do I do one one final, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I do a 24 bit final. I send 16 bit refs, and mm -hmm. I don't I don't I know what's going on, and I, I can imagine the questions that you might have. Mm -hmm. But I'm sort of fortunate to be yeah. doing it the old school way, but is, doing it in digital. But wouldn't you say that, that 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 as the formats change, the the process of mastering changes, so you're preparing for the future too, though, right? Whatever yeah, I mean, that is, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you've got a clear vision about uh, that than I do. Uh, for me, it's um, it, it is uh, kind of all about a certain sonic thing that I was not hearing in the '90s as a musician. Mm -hmm. So I sort of went after that thing, mm -hmm. and people now sort of know me for that thing. Yeah, I was going to ask, and they, and they sort of come after that. And, and in terms of the formats and the technology. Um, that's the easy part, right? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you know, that's but, gonna do what it's gonna do. Yeah. But for you, if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, because of the type of signatures, the music that people want you to do that you do well, 
it allows you to sort of focus on being a, an artisan in that space. In a sense, yes. I mean, which is really great. You, it's really liberating. Yeah, I mean, you, you hate to say that, that you have a signature sound. I think I have a signature range. Okay. So people come to me sort of for the range, mm -hmm. and I don't serve them if I'm overly respectful and I don't do my thing. Right. You know, right. Because uh, they're coming to you for that specific. Yeah, thing. like the Manson record. Uh, you know, it was a do a single and um, Tom Wally and. Uh, sure. I was a little safe on it because I was very respectful of the production team. Mm -hmm. And they liked it and they said, well, what we really wanted was, uh, you know, the Def Leppard-ish vocal and a hip hop low end, which is the kind of language that you get in mastering. Right, exactly. And I said, oh, well, that's what I would have done had I really done my thing without thinking about it. Right. So um, I find that I, I serve people best by you know, kind of staying in the, the certain artisan range. Well, and, and I think that that actually speaks to the evolution. If, if, if the world has gotten to the point where somebody can do, again, signature or stay in their range because there's enough music and business to support that, and yet there's other places where the business is evolving and it's supporting that, that means that's a healthy space that's growing and doing different things. And mm -hmm. some places in our business are not as healthy as others. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, again, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a fairly, um, you know, a productive business that's growing mm -hmm. every year. And, and I'm sort of known for yeah. what I do. Yeah. So the, the things around me are changing, but I'm, I'm still sort of going after this, this thing. But, but the thing that I do does have something uh, to do with MP3s and all that. Because sure. I like low end. I like low mid range. Mm. I don't like records that are too bright. So it turns out, just it, it happens to work. Happy accident mm -hmm. that 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 works for mm. MP3 world. Do you but like I don't, soul food? But I don't think about that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because that uh, that's why I know you like low end. <laughs> absolutely. But okay, cool. in in reality, you're, you'll never go out of style because you, you're, it's your taste that people are paying for, not your equipment, not the end result of where all that goes, so you'll work forever. Um, Thank you. I you had a sentence that, uh, that, I, that I gravitated towards in, in somewhere on the internet that was basically um, listening and hearing are different. Um, and then you expanded on that, and I thought that was brilliant, and, and you morphed into, into using references. Can you tell what you mean by the difference between hearing and listening. Yeah, I think the conversation that you might have seen was just people talking about aging and having their hearing tested and all of that, which is all very important. I think it was a Sonic Scoop article, maybe. It was really yeah. excellent. Yeah, but um, I was just talking about the intentionality of listening. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like you've had producers in here that are great, and a lot of them will talk about, you know, leaving a space for music to enter and a, mm -hmm. this notion of music coming from silence. Mm -hmm. And that's a different kind of intention mm -hmm. than just waking up in the morning and have, being full of ideas and going and making a bunch of racket. Right. You know, so that Absolutely. the intentionality of, of listening uh, to me sort of comes from, you know, uh, sort of making a space for the music to enter. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. hearing is a physical thing. You know, like you our, said, our hearing's going away all the time. You said uh, an audiologist can measure. Uh, hearing, but they can't measure. Nobody can measure listening. Yeah, I listening that is that is that taste thing, right? You know, yeah. it's, it's right. your combined life experiences I, and I, all. I that. almost got <laughs> into a small tussle at my house. Um, the BET Awards were on the other day, and there were a number of Prince tributes, and Jennifer mm -hmm. Hudson did a spectacular version of Purple Rain. And so in my house, as as music people, when there's something on that you like, which our audience does, you actually stop and listen. Right. You don't talk over it. You do something. And people in my place were talking. I was like, if everybody, if everybody doesn't shut up, you know, because I was trying to listen intentionally right. and right. not miss that right. thing. And there's yeah. there's a there's an art to doing that as part of the craft of what of what we do. And also in Brian's world, mastering engineers have better hearing than, than mixing engineers. We mastering engineers are like like. They work in like third dBs. I can't even hear two dBs. So. Well, one of the things that, in working with Dave, that I've and and doing the show, loudness has always been this sort of issue sure. in space. Um, as a mastering engineer, your approach to loudness, what you receive, how do you process it, is clipping part of what you do, is saturation part of what you look at. How does right. how do you approach it? Well, um, that's a big topic. Um, the good news is that we're sort of we're past peak loudness. I think. Yeah. That's clear. Yeah. Um, also, the good news is that thanks to you guys and others, there 
there there's better stuff coming in from people who are new. Mm -hmm. So that's the good news. Uh, I prefer to work from the non-limited mixes, unless it's Chad, obviously, who's using four limiters for effect. Mm -hmm. So if I get something that's slammed, I'll ask, hey, is, is this really the mix? Uh, or was this the ref in a respectful way? Mm -hmm. I'll clarify that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get you know, the mix in the room. And then as far as where I'm going to go with that, you know, most people doing uh, analog mastering are clipping a converter for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's been going on that way for a long time. Mm -hmm. The converters that clip best, in my experience, are the Class A discrete high headroom converters. Yeah. Um, I have one. Pretty much everyone you could name is going to have one. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it's mostly, um, you know, uh, about going for a target level mm -hmm. that I think will be sufficient for people. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they'll ask me to go a little more, or mm -hmm. sometimes they'll say, hey, we can go a little less. Mm -hmm. So over time, I've sort of developed a target point, which is sort of a midpoint. But it's, it's also you know, dependent on the music. Some music, to me, wants to be slammed a little more. Mm -hmm. And some of it wants to be more dynamic. So that's a taste thing that you just, you just put that in and mm -hmm. you do it. Mm -hmm. um, there is, of course, you know, the traditional components. There's an EQ component. There's, looking at transient balance. Um, I mean, to me, it's actually, um, it's, you can almost visualize an XYZ graph, kind mm -hmm. of a sphere. You've got mm -hmm. frequency balance, transient to, uh, to compression balance. Mm -hmm. Another axis might be harmonic distortion balance. Mm -hmm. And those three things are sort of the cocktail that I play in. Gotcha. So I have kind of a, a sphere. It's not a dot, but there's a sphere that I see things as being good, and I pull them into that sphere based on where they came. Mm -hmm. And loudness-wise, again, it's kind of a medium loud that I'll start with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people will say, hey, too much in some cases, great. Oh, gotcha. Um, people will say a little more, but less and less mm -hmm. and less. Mm -hmm. Does that... That's the trend does, going. Yeah, does no, that no. cover it? Yeah, it's, I think that's it a does. Big, it's a big one. You yeah, know? No, but we're, I, we're past peak loudness. Thank God. Thank God. D describe the relationship between a good mix engineer and a mastering engineer. That, 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 that's like choreography and teamwork sometimes, correct? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm fortunate to work with some, some really great mix engineers. And by great mix engineers, I want to include that they're great people. I think that's yeah. really important. Uh, we, we believe that it's, wholeheartedly. It's the, it's the person. So, um, you know, there's a, a thing where they get it to a certain point and then they, they let it go. Uh, interesting story with, um, with the Brothers record. Mm -hmm. With Chad Blake, who I'd never worked for at that time, and he and Dan called, and Chad said to me, you know, here's the record, and here are the files, but I want to send you the whole record down a DB, mm. because some other mastering engineers have said to me that I push it too much. Mm. And I said, you know, um, excuse me, mm -hmm. you, Chad, who I don't know a lot of people, but I know you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and Dan, who I'd worked with for a couple of years, uh, you've made a record that in the room brings the two of you to life. Ooh. You're excited. Mm. And you're asking me, who's never heard this record, how I would like it to be mixed. Mm. Mm -mm. It doesn't make sense to me. Absolutely. He said, well, let me send it to you. So such a respectful, gracious person, mm -hmm. uh, me who has never worked with him, mm -hmm. he sent me, I listened to three seconds of five songs, and I threw it in the trash. Mm. Because l in that case, less limiting was actually less musical. Ah. And so that was, that was an interesting moment where people thinking technically or fear-based mm -hmm. got in the way of what to me is a really great record. Wow. You know? And someone else might have made a different decision and said, oh yeah, I want to use that because in my mind, that's a good idea. Great observation. To me, it was, no, the, the one that brings you to life in the room, no matter how limited it is, that's the music. Absolutely. You know? what's, your, what's your stance on getting stems? I, I don't like sending stems. Not, no, I mean, to me, you know, stems are, not helping anyone, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like the mixer needs to commit. It needs to be their vision. Amen. They, they need to learn, even learning from the mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if a mixer gets it to a point where they're happy with it, they take it to the car, then everyone on the team's happy, then I do my thing. They can compare the two. They can listen and learn for next time. Mm -hmm. But stems, it's way too much control for me. I can, I could butcher a record with two channels. Mm -hmm. I don't need 10. <laughs> right. and, and, I, and, I, and I want to encourage mixers to get better because not everyone I work with is Chad Blake. Right. So, you know, there's an evolution of people that I see their work getting better right. by virtue of them committing mm. and, and by them taking the time to A, B, and learn, mm -hmm. you know, on their own. So the STEMS thing to me yeah. is, it's a... Uh, 
It's not something I do. I don't encourage it. Yeah. If, it, it, it. Tell me if this is accurate. In my world, in the mixed world, I base my mix and what I'm going to do on what I hear in the rough. So <clears throat> if, if, and I, I'm not saying sonically, but it, it is a guideline sonically. And, and so if I don't get an accurate, an accurate representation of what you want me to do, same for you, you're going to get something different. Much like if you give me, if, you're, if I'm a chef and you give me anchovies, potatoes, and apples and ask me to do lasagna, and I didn't, don't blame me. Right. I, didn't, I didn't get any pasta and I didn't get, get any tomato sauce. Right. You, you, can't, you can't do what can't we do it if it's not there. unless you know exactly right. guidelines and parameters. And, and in your world, I'm sure so many sessions are unattended. You don't have the luxury of going, hey, what did you really mean here? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Your concept about references, I reference a lot. And I sometimes feel guilty. And I, don't, I feel uncomfortable referencing in front of clients. But tell us about your concept. I thought it was... Uh, it, it gave me confidence that maybe I'm on the right well, track. Well, I'm, with I'm that. not sure which thing you're thinking. I mean, to me, the the whole process of making the record is I like to think of it at best as rolling the rock downhill, mm -hmm. from the moment of inspiration to the arrangement, to the tracking, mm -hmm. performance, mm -hmm. to the mixing, to the mastering. So, yeah, you know, not in every case do I get a ref because. Uh, People know what I do. They say, do your thing. Right. And then I can quickly have them comment. We can work it out. But if that doesn't work or if they have a ref, yeah, it's, it's really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, because you're, 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 you're trying to go with like an, an energetic flow from the artistic intention at the moment of inspiration yeah. through the mastering to, to the emotional connection so, so with people in the end. You know, exactly. that, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm at that threshold between the studio and the world. So if you take that sort of sequential series, right? And then you back up your training as a musician and the fact that you are a musician, does that help inform your mastering? Because there's a different language you can speak, you understand in the sequence of events, sequence of events kind of where each thing should happen and, and the way to keep the music musical and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think at this point it's less intellectual than intuitive, but yeah. I've done all the steps. I've yeah. done them for a long time. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I came to mastering 16 years ago mm -hmm. after making music for much longer and making records and mixing and producing and touring and writing and all that. So, but how yeah, are you only 22? I, I understand. I, I know, it's amazing. Just, just good genes. I've got a surgeon. On Columbus, me. Ohio. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, it definitely helps. Mm -hmm. It definitely helps. And the uh, reason I ask that is, is it seems to me, um, you actually made the point, I often compare musicians to athletes. And, you know, when you're playing or creating or whatever, it gets really good when you're not thinking about it. It just starts to flow. That's out the only it, time it gets good. Right, exactly. And that's when it's intuitive and when you're able to, yeah. like you just said, able to bring that intuitive feel to what you're doing. You're not thinking it through and you're feeling it. That's when right. the music speaks better and the result ends up better. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah, you, you do all the work until you get so you get in the moment where it can just flow. I mean, yeah. I work I work very quickly. Um, I always work unattended. Mm. Uh, nobody's ever been to my room except they might come over to listen for a minute to enjoy it, you mm -hmm. know. But um, I, I, you would run out of the room screaming. I skip around with a cursor. You know, oh, I, do, I, I do the record as a whole. Really? Three seconds, two seconds, five seconds, ten seconds. Hmm. Choruses, check vocals, check low. You're talking about, see, about albums. Yeah, right. if, albums. And I, and I do, you know, I'm fortunate to still do, you know, probably three, four albums a week. Nice. Right? So, so, yeah, there's a lot of cursor skipping. Oh, cool. But yeah, it's, it's about sort of getting in a zone for me, mm -hmm. which is a kind of intuitive, yeah, absolutely. Know, flowy zone. Um, Chad Blake is one of my top five favorite engineers, so I might ask too many Chad Blake questions. I apologize. Mine, mine too. But you said that when you first got a mix from him that, that it had a really strong center and great panning, but it was a box mix. And so one of the, one of the ways you could enhance it was um, through adding some saturation. Explain that why you would act, add saturation and how you would add saturation. What tools do you use for that? Well, um, I know you I use the was, head, but. Yeah, it was about maybe 12 or 13 years ago, you know, after being a, a decade and a half's worth of the world's biggest gear slut before there was a uh -huh, term, uh -huh. I, I found my chain and my chain hasn't changed and now I just have backup pieces of the chain. Mm -hmm. So there's something about, you know, the way my chain represents my ear that things going through a flat 
get better. Mm -hmm. And then it's very easy for me to do all styles and everybody. Everybody right. sees the same chain. Right, if right. it's a really great mix, I might knock one or two pieces out. But mm -hmm. there's only four analog pieces and four digital pieces, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So, Chad, yeah, um, great sense of sort of mid-side, great sense of mono sources, uh, his mm -hmm. mono panning. Mm -hmm. uh, he affects every moment you know there's no naturalism in his work is there's a, there's automation on every mm -hmm. thing you mm -hmm. know there's distortion filtering everywhere mm -hmm. and yet he does it with such grace and taste mm -hmm. and musicality mm -hmm. that it sounds natural mm -hmm. even though it's very controlled if you mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. um, so with his stuff being all in the box I mean he has wonderful monitoring and his stuff is great but there's there's some things that I like to do uh, you know, with, with all records, which apply to his as well. Just filtering things that bring out the humanity in the music yeah. and, and the, the, the emotional connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, just my, my stock answer, I like low mid-range because that's where the heart is. Mm -hmm. I like low end because that gets you, that's the Africa, that gets mm -hmm. you dancing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then enough clarity where, you know, the vocal speaks, the intention speaks, but it's not abrasive. Right. You know, some... some yeah, but the question was... <clears throat> What made you think it needed more saturation, and how did you add that saturation to the mix? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, my my saturation is kind of a clean saturation that's always there. Uh -huh. So to to get into the gear, you know, there's this fair mini Q, which is a very sort of clean but 22 tube yeah. thing, uh -huh. and there's this Elysia Alpha thing. I have serial number one, which is Class A discrete. My converter is a uh, the Pacific Microsonics, which is Class A discrete. Uh -huh. So these have a sort of subtle distortion signature mm -hmm. that can actually give you kind of a microdynamic lift mm -hmm. in something that's heavily saturated. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you know, that, the sound of those pieces, mm -hmm. some tube things and some class A discrete mm -hmm. things, in conjunction with some EQ moves, mm -hmm. a little boost, a little cut, a little here, a little there. So, mm -hmm. so you're not really adding saturation, your gear automatically adds it for you? The gear adds it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, just a little. And do, just you, do you use the head for that a lot? Or? I use the head like one, one, zero. Mm -hmm. Like if I turned it off, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't ruin my work, mm -hmm. but it takes a little bit of the 3D mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. There's just a little bit of a pop to the head. And I, I don't really go past one or maybe two. Yeah. And remember in the release you signed at Pinsales Place, you'd never say, I'm sorry. So <laughs> yeah, this, this, yeah, that, that's beyond. No, I just, I'm just real well, curious about that because um, there's a lot of things I don't really understand and I don't even know what saturation really means. It's just kind of a nebulous catch-all term for, for stuff that just happens in the mix <laughs> when you put it through gear. but but. His records sound like he, he controls it, so I was thinking mm -hmm. maybe, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't use much compression. I try not to. Uh, I, I look at that as more of a fix. Um, you know, maybe if something is over compressed, sometimes you can compress it to get it move more, to mm -hmm. get it to move more. Mm -hmm. But I try not to. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's really mostly EQ limiting the sound of the chain, sometimes the shaping of the V, as I call it, which would be a little bit of mid side right. treatment. Don't explain that shaping of the V. Well, you know, part part of mastering to me is a is a is about sort of instantaneous subconscious things that people think feel when they hear music. Mm -hmm. So the shape of the V is something that we're all sort of conditioned, having heard the world's music, to be an indicator of what is uh, this style. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a super pop thing is going to be. A deep V where the low end is here, everything pan on the side. You describing frequencies. Frequencies. Oh, okay. That mm -hmm. shape of the V. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I might do some shaping, you know, alternative rock. Let's say is out here mm -hmm. where there's very little punch. Mm -hmm. You know, modern rock might be here and pop might be mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I might do things with the shape of the V to accentuate punch, to clarify the style. Mm -hmm. uh, p part of it to me is uh, just clarification of the intention. You know, and it, that, that can come into play. Now, you also have taken an approach with your facility that's not necessary. You know, you worked in a mastering room for a, long, for a while, mm -hmm. really well-known one. Over times. So. Um, number of times, and most of them are enclosed, they're in the cave, right. they're just, it's no windows, no, you have a different approach. Yeah, I, I had um, a couple of rooms like that. They weren't, you know, $150,000 rooms, but they were sure. good enough rooms. Right. And, you know, you, you end up being there all day. Right. No light, no air. 
uh, it's not pleasant. Right. So, I agree. Uh, you know, in a, in a kind of esoteric way, I, I like to see mastering as the threshold between the, the windowless cave world of mm -hmm. creation mm -hmm. and the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the part of the move of coming out here was that the space um, allows for that. The, the space is, is these real trap freestanding walls that you could throw in a U-Haul and mm. take out in a day. Mm. And the sound goes out through the walls, the low end sound goes mm -hmm. out and up into this four story structure. Mm. And <clears throat> behind me are some accordion doors that I can open and get fresh air. Mm. A lot of times I do new work in the evening, so the house is hot. Right. I can open that and it's like sitting outside. Oh, nice. So I've got sunlight in the day, mm -hmm. fresh air at night, and I'm not just in this, you know, dark place with yeah. with the music all day. It changes, it kind of changes who you are when you're in that kind yeah. of environment. Nature. Right? Nature yeah. is good. The, absolutely. We, we, like, we like nature. Go ahead. I was, <laughs> no, I was just practicing taking a deep breath to oh. see if you'd stop. Uh, Sean, where you got a couple questions for our guests? Good ones. Oh, you did? This reference from Gene Gills. What's your workflow when you get a mix with a low end is just completely out of control? What, what steps do you take to remedy it? Well, without an example, it's tough to say exactly how we just remedy it. Just think one of my mixes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Call Herb, cuss him out. Yeah. <laughs> Lot, lots of cutting. Yeah. Uh, lots of cutting. Yeah. Um, yeah, low end is low end is the thing on everybody's mix to a degree, and, and you can tell a mixer's skill really by their low end. Hmm. Uh, that's a, that's a quick way to check when what's going on. So, uh, I started out doing mixes that weren't very good, mm -hmm. and over the years I've been fortunate to get better and better work. Um, so I can handle whatever comes. It, it's <laughs> tough to say. A lot of cutting. <laughs> that's hmm. the. I mean, that's any mastering engineer would probably say the same. You know. Give us another, sir. From Brian Jones, what piece of advice do you think has been the most beneficial to you as a mastering engineer, and who did you get the advice from? Ooh, that's a tough one. that is a tough one. It's a tough one. Uh, the most. Uh, da, da, da. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of uh, wise people I've been fortunate to be around. Um, I have. I'd probably have to give it to Robert Fripp. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Music is the architecture of silence. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a better way of saying what we say. I was say. just thinking the same thing. I may have to borrow that and give him credit. You. Well, whatever. It's, uh, <laughs> it's that's, been uh, that's, a, that's a good one. We that's tell people one. all the time that there's, there's no place in the world that's silent. Audio is everywhere. And, uh, Yours has a certain elegance. So. Yeah, but the architectural <laughs> silence is much, I much like better. It's pretty elegant. Oh, it's really elegant. Um, we'll fit note it. So <laughs> um, now you've come to that vaunted place in the show where... Our resident pitcher and athlete, mm -hmm. Mr. Dave Pensado. Um, the I've, All -Star I've games, seen this part. All Star Games coming up, so he's particularly fluid with his arm. Now you, you know, you got a very smart guy here. Lots of stuff thrown right back at you. Are you prepared? I'm prepared to lose. Oh well, you know, throw some heaters, man. You got it. You ready for batter's box? Nice. Tee it up. Let's go. Dither. Ooh. Easy. Ooh. Metering. To a point. Mm. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's roll. We're rolling. I like this rhythm. He's fast. Yeah. So it's bass. Yes. <laughs> M fit. For a while. <laughs> Reverb. As needed. Mm. Uh, here's our old buddy again. Saturation. Everywhere. Mm. Chad Blake. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And everywhere. SoundCloud. I don't have to mess with it much. Ooh. If your studio caught fire, besides your dog, your spouse, your computer, your 2009 laptop, and <laughs> anything made by Neve or Pultec, what would you rescue? I can't take the whole desk, right? Mm, well, if you can carry it. No, I can't if you want to lose. Yeah. I, 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 the Fairman. The yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a great piece of gear. Mm. I lost. Well, I've just never, my rhythm. Looked like you had. Well, added, his bat speed. Tennis. At, at his, a Japanese his, yeah, it was ping pong. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, but the bat speed was so good. Um, the, the, the beauty of watching people in the audio space evolve into their own thing for us is part of what is a joy to see. You know, you're at all of our events. We've gotten to know you over time. We share Candace Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. In, 
in ways that are not biblical. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even let me finish. <laughs> um, uh, but you know what's fun is it's fun to watch um, really smart people with their own taste signature and stuff bring themselves to the, our business. Um, mm. We have the luxury of doing that, and hopefully people still receive it well, and I think that's what you're doing. And um, uh, we have only scratched the surface with you, sir, so if we bug you and have you do more, would you? can we make that invitation? Anytime. So we've got a couple things, Pro Committee for Pensado Awards, the show itself, there's lots of stuff. So I yep. will I will reach out and bug you. Um, good stuff, huh, DP? Absolutely. Yeah, well, it's funny because here's what happens so that you know. We'll just share this. Before we do a show, I'll get a call from Dave, and he'll predict how good the show will be based on his sort of pre-interviews. So I got like four star predictions before we started the, on, after you guys talked. I, I, out of how many stars? Eleven. Oh, no. <laughs> Tequila. <laughs> exactly. And also, would you just pass along to Chad Blake that somebody whose last name starts with a T thinks it's so cool that he has a T in front of his name. So that's my man. Uh, Dave, take us home, sir. Okay, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to get Brian to help me out on this. Going to sing um, a chorus or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. He said something that I thought would be very instructive for you guys that are just kind of starting out. Um, he said, when you're, when you're mastering your own stuff, and sometimes when you're starting out, you need to. I, I look at mastering uh, among all their other chores. They're a safety net for me. I can go out and do all kinds of wrong stuff, and they'll fix it for me. So it gives me a confidence to do more. But he said, when you're starting out and you're trying to master your own stuff, have a dedicated room for mixing and another dedicated room for mastering. And I thought that was brilliant because I've been doing it all in the same room. <laughs> and uh, can you give me a, a, a paragraph on that? That was great. Well, yeah, my, the house I had uh, outside of Columbus years ago, when I was a musician who was also recording and engineering and started mastering my own stuff, you know, 1995, mm -hmm. um, I, I thought, well, it was clear that it had to be a different mindset. And it was very hard to do. It is a different mindset. It's so hard to do. Mm -hmm. It takes like three weeks, and even then, can you really do it? Can you get that distant from it to be that fresh? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I spend all day going in and out of my home studio to stay fresh, mm -hmm. and mastering is all I do, and it's not my record. Right. If it was your record, right. you know, but having said that, if you're going to attempt it, yeah, you have a different room, uh, better acoustics in that room. You, you, you try to mirror all the things that, that we mastering engineers need. Let me get one, one other thing, too, and we'll, we'll, we'll reconstruct this. Um, there's also evolutions in the mastering space in terms of technology, technology-based mastering, and so forth. You see that coming? Yep. And do, do you just learn to live with these evolution things? It doesn't necessarily change what you do, but yeah. it may be available to other people. Is that a fair way to put it? Yeah, I mean, I love technology. Um, I'm human. I like things to be easy. Mm -hmm. uh, we all like things to be easy. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a curve, I think, with people where you, know, you try the easy thing, you try the cheap thing, and mm -hmm. if that works for you, fine. If it doesn't, you you move on. Right. And so, you know, people find their they find their level. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, um, the best mixers in the world are still wanting to use a mastering engineer. Right. So there's right. no real threat there. Right. 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 Uh, but technology is always going to happen, and I, I'm and it's all for never it. Never going to stop. It's right. never going to stop. Right. You know, I'm 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 all I'm all for it. Um, you know. People eat this kind of food, and they decide they want that kind of food, and mm -hmm. off you go. You know, I mean, that's, that's the evolution of taste. You know? Take us home one more time. One of the things that uh, Brian mentioned was the importance of uh, a team, to have a team around you and to be part of a team. And for me, I think that hits home really hard because um, that support system allows me to take chances, take risks, and I know that there's people involved either before I get it or after it leaves me, that will that'll be my safety net and take care of things for me. And mastering is certainly one of those processes that does that for me. See you next time. See you.